everybody. This is Ryan McClanahan with HistoryThroughCarriage.com. Hope you're all doing very well today. So in this video, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about the history of 3D technology uh, or holograms through the 1999 Upper Deck SPX Football Masters. It's a subset. Um, really quickly, uh, I really don't collect a whole lot of modern stuff. It's very rare. Uh, I thank uh, Dakota from Sports Cards Anonymous for this one. Uh, thanks, Dakota. I really appreciate it. I'm not being facetious at all in any way, shape, or form, buddy. Uh, the thing is, he was talking about uh, a bunch of modern football cards, and this happened to appear, and I thought that was really cool. Um, I, I've never actually seen this card prior to that because... Uh, I stopped collecting modern cards back in 94 during the baseball strike. Uh, thank you very much, baseball players, for that. Um, again, I'm not being facetious at all on that. Uh, but actually, in, in a real interesting thing occurred. I really kind of uh, started to study a little bit more on these cards. It's, it's not a tough set. I think there's about 15 cards in the subset and uh, they're not expensive at all uh, and I think they'd be a kind of a great way to uh, get into maybe science uh, and that's what I'm going to kind of talk about today with this set. First off, uh, I've always been interested in uh, 3D technology or uh, holograms ever since I saw a National Geographic from 1985 and I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> That was the first holographic cover that National Geographic came out with, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I wanted to find out more about it and how it was made. And there were 3D cards back in the 1980s. Uh, they just weren't like what I had seen on that cover. The 1986 Sport Flicks, which I didn't have, I didn't really like them. Uh, they were out, and uh, you did have a bunch of uh, Kellogg's cards from the 1970s. Prior to that, I think the first set issued in 3D was the 1968 Topps 3D, but it was a test issue that I think they only issued in Brooklyn. Those cards are really kind of difficult today, bordering on rare, and they are expensive. I didn't see any of those until much later on. Uh, in my early uh, hobby career as a, a vintage collector. Um, so the holographic technology was uh, decades in the making, actually. And in 1947, there was a scientist named Dennis Gaber uh, who broke through with a theory that uh, was based on interference. And he got the Nobel prize in physics in 1971 for it, so it was kind of big. It took a long time for 3D technology to progress to what we see in this set right here. It was decades. And in 1960, there was a Russian and uh, American scientist, uh, a guy, I'm going to screw this one up, but the Russian's name was Prokhorev, and another one named Basov, uh, Charles Towns uh, was the American, and they created the laser, and that's what the breakthrough was. Uh, basically, uh, if it wasn't for the laser beam, uh, we wouldn't have cards like this. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how these things are made so that you can see them on your cards. And I think that's really, really interesting. In the diagram that I'm showing you here, a three-dimensional photograph is made through the interference of two laser beams using a splitter or a shutter, which blocks the light ray. Now, in the case of this particular card, you can see that the image is printed in layers and the light is reflected from the surfaces at different angles. And it's why you see a series of checkerboard patterns and then when you turn uh, slightly to side to side, you get a series of diagonal and vertical lines. There's actually a lot going on here, but I didn't want to bog you guys down with the technology or the terminology used 
in the holographic process. And I'll be actually doing a much larger article and uh, its history and step-by-step -step process of how these cards were made. And the history actually goes back to about 130 to 150 years. Uh, I also think too that having a rough general knowledge of how these cards were printed uh, will help you out in determining fraud and forgeries. And I always say too that uh, in my particular case, I go to a lot of card shows and I take a lot of notes and ph photographs of the cards that I'm seeing. And um, that way I have kind of my own database and I know what I'm looking for. And that will help to greatly reduce my chances of getting uh, fooled. Uh, but you know what, as I always say too, and I think every dealer will say to you, um, that you will be fooled at least once. You will be taken for a ride at least once. Sometimes you actually need to do this in order to learn, but um, the more cards you come across, the better off that you're going to be, and the more knowledge you gain and pick up uh, through this process, it'll be in your best interest. Now, if you guys wanted to try to complete this particular set or the 1999 Upper Deck SPX, uh, I'm going to show you guys some of the particular details of that and try to help you out with that. I also think too that the technology in printing is getting better and better each and every year and uh, that's why you probably should learn about that as well and that's really going to help you out. So guys, thank you very much for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it and I would love to hear what you have to say about this issue and uh, if there's anything that I may have missed, obviously I think you guys could let me know. I always like to have a nice dialogue going on between the viewers and myself and I'm actually pretty good at getting back to you guys so guys thank you so much for stopping by I greatly appreciate it as always and I will talk to you later